Hello and welcome back to Home Boundless. I'm Cherish and today we're gonna do something pretty exciting. And I'm I don't I don't know if I'm gonna I don't know if I can pull this off. Christmas is over, so as soon as New Year's rolled around, we took down all the Christmas decorations and we put up Valentine's decorations and they're super cute. Uh, I feel like I feel like the Valentine's display could probably use a big puffy flowery garland uh, behind it to sort of bulk it up. But I also I think it just got so burnt out from stuff, stuff, stuff over Christmas. Just having a little bit of breathing space, that extra visual space, it's pretty nice. So I only have one real problem and that is, it's, well, I suppose it's two problems. It's, it's, it, it, it's these two. It's it's our beautiful Queenie and and our dashing Kingsley. And they are both fabulous and I love them. Uh, but one of the things that I like to do when setting up my displays is I like to have, well, I like to have something that sort of tells a story. Even if it's not like a strong story, in my head at least I know, oh, these two are in a relationship, they're, they're thinking about it, like they're waiting to buy flowers, they're doing something. I need to have some sort of story to help me when I am setting up my decorations to sort of set the scene. But the other thing that's really, really important and don't don't forget it is levels height difference because especially if you only have target birds there's two sizes of birds there's these and then maybe I don't have a mini and then maybe a mini and that's it so if all you have for decorations is target birds your decorations are flat they're not interesting I mean, of course, there's the inherent interest of, oh, that's a cute bird, but it's really nothing to draw you in. So we need to have lots of different, lots of different heights. So I, I, I prop these guys up on Lego blocks and like, yeah, yeah, it helps for them to be up, but they're just, it's just not enough. So that's why today we are making, I don't, I'm going to try. I'm gonna try so hard to make thrones. <laughs> I initially gathered up like foam and cardboard because I was gonna make thrones out of cardboard and felt. But then I realized that I don't know how I would do that since I can't really use glue. This is a reoccurring problem in my crafts is that I have multiple chemical sensitivity. So uh, I could, you know, maybe mask up and use glue, but since like that's a midi that's something where I'd have to keep working with it even after it's been glued. Um, it just I don't I don't know how feasible it is for me to use glue. Uh, <laughs> so uh, how would I I don't how would I make thrones out of cardboard if I can't use glue? I don't know. Uh, my plan which I'm still not quite sure how I'm gonna pull this off if I can't use glue, is I made my partner go to the thr craft store, to the Michaels, and he picked these up, which it's pretty long, and there's three of them, one, two, three, but uh, I would like them to be a little bit wider, so it's gonna take some, it's gonna take some creative planning to figure out how to make this work. And yet again, how am I going to do this without glue? I don't know. But what I can do is, is I can make teeny tiny pilot holes and try and use some little brad nails. And hopefully that'll work. Like that's the sort of thing that kids, wooden project kits have, is they have teeny tiny pilot holes and little brad nails. So hopefully, Anyway, so that's the plan is I need to figure out how to make basically two big chairs out of this and cut it out and affix it together in a way that it will hold up some verbs and then go into storage and then come out of storage so I can use them again and again and again because I want thrones forever. 
I want Thrones forever. So we're gonna work on this. Step one for plan, balsa wood. We'll figure it out. Then how am I gonna get the detailing? Um, so I've never done this before. We're gonna try some wood carving. So I don't think, cause this is, you know, it's not super thick. So it's not super thick, but hopefully it's thick enough that we can drill into it. And also balsa wood is so soft. You can kind of just squish it with your fingers. My problem is that this is thinner than the birds. So I'm gonna have to do some wide details. We're gonna figure it out. I'm gonna take some measurements and we're gonna start a sketching. So I measured the birds and I measured the wood and using that, I use one inch per square to design the basic throne that I wanted. And then I drew that from different angles so I could gather up all of my cut lists. Now all I have to do is uh, figure out how to carve it all and put it together, which is going to be interesting and also the next step. To make the heart, I found the middle and looking at my drawing, I could see that I had only about two inches on the top piece of the wood. So I marked out an inch to get rid of. For the bottom, I just, I found the middle and then drew lines from the middle corner to corner so that I'd be able to cut those off on the machine downstairs, easy peasy. And then for the top, this is something where having the grid really helps me because I could sort of get an idea of where all of the curves needed to go and just give myself some guide marks so I could try and keep it as symmetrical as possible. And unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have a good way to cut that out here. So I don't have a lot of good power tools to help me get this done. So it's gonna have to, it's gonna have to be carving. I clamped down a piece of wood across my desk to give me something to hold the wood so that I could carve against it and that way the wood wouldn't slip away from me and I wouldn't be tempted to carve towards myself because you should not carve towards yourself. I'm still learning. I did get the hang of this eventually, but ultimately it turns out that balsa wood, it's not great for carving because it's so soft that the structure is very weak so if you can go with the grain, it works super well, but anything against the grain, was, it just ended up really, really chunky. Like you could maybe sand it down, but then you'd also risk snapping your piece in half. So I did my best. <laughs> I carved a lot and uh, I learned a lot, but uh, I, I, I don't know that ball, I don't know that this was the right material for the job. That was messy. <laughs> and uh, somewhat effective. Um, I broke a few of them. I knew it was going to be difficult because we're gonna have the wrong grain really. So I don't know that this is really gonna hold up I might have to rethink the legs at some point. Kind of always knew that was gonna be the case, but we'll see. But I have the backs carved out and I cut and carved out the hearts. So I have little hearts. Um, yeah, there we go. And then We'll have the pieces here. We've got side pieces. Although I think I'm gonna use these off cuts from this because to make it a little bit bigger. It's kind of, I'm not really loving the shape of it, but I think it'll be fine. And then the seats. So the other problem that I have right now <laughs> is that I, I couldn't find any brad nails. So I think I'm gonna clean this up so that it is not so messy when the kid gets home and then we're gonna have to wait until I can send my partner out to pick up some brad nails. But the good news is we have pieces and uh, 
I've pretty much used up all of the balsa wood. So once these legs start breaking, I think the next step is going to be probably cutting some dowels and just trying to find a way to make the dowels work. But maybe the legs won't break. What if everything was fine? My partner finally had a chance to go to the hardware store. We have a few contenders. We've got these little brad nails, which are honestly probably gonna be the winners. We've got these guys who are a bit bigger, carpet tacks. Yeah, I think these are too, too wide. I know that the balsa wood's gonna wanna split, so I'm gonna wanna make sure that I have the least possible amount of things to make it split. And then he also got me just a nail and tack assortment kit. Um, I don't know that any of these are better than these, but he did not get me a teeny tiny drill bit, which honestly, I don't know if they make anything small enough for brad nails, at least like not easily available in just a normal old a normal old uh, hardware shop. So, I don't know, I suppose what I should do is I should take some of the wood that has already split in practice. Uh, because balsa wood is really soft, especially like in between the grain, I'm kind of hoping I can sort of just push it through there. I don't know. But because I know, uh, so yeah, as a reminder, these are what I have for the legs. And because, um, you know, obviously this is the grain. So this is where the strength is. This is where it's easiest to carve it nicely because this is against the grain. It uh, doesn't look good. Like I couldn't get it smooth. And I'm worried that if I try to take sandpaper to it, it's just gonna snap it. Um, I'm worried that when I put this in storage, it's going to snap. I'm worried that when my child picks it up to play with it, it's just going to snap. So I'm so worried that this, these legs that I spent so long carving, and honestly, one of them looks really good. Here it is. Oh, well, it doesn't. Oh, no. Oh, no. I just snapped one. Okay, that, that clinches it. I was going to say that I have a backup plan uh, in case these snap or in case I just decide that I'm too worried about it. I have a backup plan. And uh, where did you go, backup plan? So my backup plan is I cut some just plain ones that I can make a little box. This will probably be easier to see when I do it. Um, but also I had this is also going to be a problem because these are, these are not going to be as soft like the balsa wood. Might have to do some more figuring. But I also cut, I've got more of them obviously because this is not enough. I cut some legs just out of a dowel <laughs> and uh, this is a much harder wood. so. Not sure how it's going to work together, but it's not going to break. At least the chair will probably not break at the legs. <sighs> We're going to do our best. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and put it together because I really want the thrones to be done because I'm so excited and they're going to be so cute. But because I have such high hopes for them, I'm also really nervous. I don't know. Don't say you know they're gonna break. They might not break. Um, and also, I was really careful when doing the rest of the bits to try and keep it so that the the strength of the grain would really help it. So hopefully, hopefully we don't really lose any of the detail of the crown. I think everything else will probably be pretty relatively sturdy. Um, just please, please don't fall apart. All right. We can't put it off any longer. I'm gonna, let's do some nailing. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna start, start by getting a feel for the material with the pieces that are already broken and are there for scrap. And then we're gonna move on to the real thing.
Okay, that was incredibly easy to just tack that together. So, okay, woohoo. I tried. I tried to make it work. <laughs> I tried so hard to make these dowels work and they didn't. It wasn't working and trying to get them to work was making the boxes fall apart. So I eventually realized that if I kept trying to do this, like I wouldn't have any wood to pound them into because every time a nail went in crooked or I pulled it out it just left such a mess of the balsa wood. All the pieces that I already cut for the legs were the pieces that were against the grain had snapped off or like they matched the ones that snapped off and therefore I didn't have enough of them anyway. Yes the legs on those were not usable but but the top part that was all like with the grain and strong. If I combined those, just the top parts of those with some of the other scrap pieces that I had that I could cut down, I would have enough to be able to make just some balsa wood legs. And uh, they wouldn't be super stable, but they would be much more stable than my original balsa wood legs and they would be a heck of a lot easier to attach than these these dowels. Sometimes we walk the path of learning and we learn not to walk down that path again. When I carved the back piece I made sure that I kept the bottom intact so that it would have a little extra stability. And then I attached it making sure that I put the nails into the long like grain line so that it wasn't wouldn't snap off super easily. And then because my body is deeply and profoundly broken, I put on a respirator and I threw on some paint. Uh, I know, I know, I made a big deal about glue and now I'm using paint, but you know, just, I couldn't see a way around it. And uh, also, you know, as long as I'm wearing a mask for this part, I should be able to get away from it while it dries and be fine. Historically, I've been fine, but yes, masked up, did some painting, and yes, these colors look a little bit like a, a strong choice, and that's because they are the base colors. <laughs> I wanted to do a base color, a base coat of black where the gold was going to be, and then, I don't know, pink or something lighter for the heart, 
but I couldn't find black. But it turns out that these weren't my paints. They were my child's paints and I stole my child's paints and uh, they still had the black in their bedroom. So <laughs> at this moment in time, I have no black. So I am using blue and uh, coming up with some funky, funky chairs. Once the underlayer has dried, then I add a coat of gold and a coat of red and let that dry <laughs> and then do it again. After that's had a few coats and some time to dry, then it's time to add some details. I would love to have made it look like the red was like a fabric that was tufted and it had like a wooden frame around it. Uh, that's another one of those things that I couldn't quite figure out how to do without glue and with the limitations of the balsa wood. I settled with having just a sleeker look to it, but adding the black detailing around it really kind of makes it look intentional and finished. Partly because the wood was really damaged from the dowel attempts. <laughs> And partly because it was always my plan to have a felted seat. I just wasn't sure it was going to be achievable. So that's why I made sure that I painted the seat in such a way that if I didn't get the felt done, then it wouldn't be obvious that I had a different plan from the beginning. But uh, I, once again, this would be a situation where some glue would be really helpful. But instead, I laid the felt on top of the chair and then I, wherever there was a corner or a leg, I cut in so that I could fold over those pieces. And <laughs> it was a bit tricky figuring out like how to get it folded up nicely. Steps that I made sure that I did prior to the felt though, because I knew that I was going to be doing this step is I did add another nail from the outside for each of the legs just to make it that extra sturdy because I wanted to get it from every angle that I could. And it's a little bit tricky. And it's a little bit tricky with balsa wood. Eventually my heart's gonna break and it's gonna snap. But for now, I've done everything I can to get it as secure as possible. <laughs> and the, it's gonna get covered up with the felt. So it doesn't matter what it looks like anymore. Once I secure the legs as much as possible, then we're wrapping the felt around and we're sewing it up nice and tightly. I had to add a couple of more cuts to try and get it to look as smooth as possible. But I was able to sew it all. It didn't take that long. It's obviously longer than hot glue, but it didn't take that long. And I think it turned out really nicely. Well, I totally trashed my workstation and this is taken so much longer than it needed to for a simple project. Man, using glue just would have, it would have been like a one day make with glue. And even then probably, yeah. My original baby idea for this project was going to be a lot of cardboard and foam and felt and sewing. Uh, and in the end, it's still is a little bit of felt and sewing, but it's, I think it turned out pretty cute. Not the backs. The backs are ugly. That doesn't matter. But da, 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 da. we have thrones. Um, I'm a little bit regretting that I didn't make a love seat throne because I wasn't really thinking about like just how long they need to be to accommodate the birds' bodies and how like it could have made a cute little love seat. But that's okay because these little throne chairs are so cute. They're meant to be identical, but one of the hearts is up a little bit higher. So um, that it just is what it is. Uh, come on, yeah. I painted over the detailing cause like the black lines were a little bit too much. And I kind of just wanted the suggestion of it. And uh, so it doesn't like quite match. And also like in like my dream, of course they'd be super ornate thrones, but given the limitations of what I had to work with and you know, no glue, no putty, I think like it turned out pretty stinking cute. And begrudgingly, when I look at the display, it's like, okay, well, everything, everything that's I have on the mantle for Valentine's decorations is pretty like graphic. It's not, 
super detailed. So like even these, I don't know how well they'll marry with it, but I think if I had them any more detailed, they would not marry well. The only exception is like if I, I could probably add a couple actual rhinestones instead of having these little painted on there and that would be cute, but I think they're gonna look super cute. Uh, fingers crossed. I think they're gonna look super cute on the mantle, so I can't wait anymore. Let's go see. Thank you so much for sharing this journey with me today. I am in love with how the birds and their thrones turned out. If you like this, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time. Bye.